As many of you know, and as some have requested, I wanted to create an automatic watering system or smart water pump controller and also have the option to remotely control my water pump from my cell phone. Well, that day has finally come, so stay tuned to learn how. So the core component for this DIY project is the particle photon microcontroller that can be programmed over the cloud via Wi-Fi to control or monitor almost anything you can think of. If you do not already have a particle photon module, I would recommend going with the particle argon microcontroller which has all the features the photon has and some, but most importantly, it comes with a development board and other useful components for anyone starting out. Let's first get started by installing the particle photon module into the breadboard and supplying power to it via the micro USB cable. Note, if you want it, you can power this module from a USB wall adapter if that is more convenient. Next, we will need to use Particle's mobile app to claim ownership of the module and assign it to our Particle account. First, we need to hold the setup button on the particle photon board for about 3 seconds until the LED starts to flash dark blue. Next, we need to open our settings and connect to the Photon Wi-Fi network. Also, before I forget, be sure to smash that like button if you enjoy these videos. After we accept ownership of the device, you will need to select a Wi-Fi network that has internet access so that the particle photon can access the internet. Now as the app is configuring the photon module, you will notice the middle LED flash different colors which represent different modes. You can find a full list with explanations for the mode colors on Particle's documentation webpage. Next, I needed to give my new Photon device a name which I decided to name it Water Pump since that's the application it will be used for, but you can name it whatever you want. Once the name has been assigned, you have completed the process for pairing your Photon device to your Particle Cloud account. Next, as a quick test, I flash the module with Particle's Tinker app which is built into the app and allows you to manually control the different input and output pins on the board. Note, when you flash your device, you are basically just downloading a program to it from the cloud. After the flashing process is complete, you will notice I can now access the Tinker app and control the inputs and outputs. For this test, I will change pin D7 to an output signal or digital write in particles language and turn it on and off since there is an LED embedded in the chip for this pin that will turn on if the output is on. When I tap the D7 circle on the Tinker app, you will see that the status of D7 changes on the app and on the Photon module. Next, I needed to create a mobile app with as little effort as possible so that I could easily control and monitor my rain barrel system from my phone. That's where Blink came to the rescue. And what's also cool about Blink is they will allow me to quickly share my project with you by using a QR code shown to the right. So as an example, I will scan the QR code with my phone to show you how this would work if you wanted to replicate this project. So first, let's open the Blink app and then press the scan QR code button at the top of the app and next you will need to scan the QR code shown on the right. Once Blink scans the code, the project I created should be imported into your Blink account. So let's quickly go over what some of the shown core components are in the app. At the top right, there's a play button that when pressed, activates the application. When you press the button again, you put the application back into design mode so that you can make changes such as adding more buttons or indicators or moving components around. If you click on the nut icon, you will open up the settings for the app. Here's where you will find your unique authorization token that will allow you to pair or connect your particle photon module to the app. I typically just email this token to myself so that I can easily copy and paste it into my particle photon programming code that we'll get into next. If you would like to learn more about Blink and its features, I will leave a link in the description. Now that we have our Blink token, we can head over to the particle website to log into our free account to flash the programming code to the Photon module I have pre-written for this water pump application. When you log in, you should see a list of devices that have been paired with your account and whether or not they are connected to the Particle Cloud network. On the left pane at the bottom, you will find the Web IDE button that will allow us to program our Photon module. Here you can see a list of my apps that I have already programmed as well as some sample apps. 
We will not go into all the details in this video for this web IDE platform, but if you would like to receive a copy of the programming code I used for this app, there will be a link in the description. Next, I will open up the water pump program I created. The most important part in this program that you need to be aware of is the programming line that has the Blink authorization key, which allows me to use Blink functions or features within my programming code. So for your application, you will need to update this line with your unique Blink authorization key. Next, I need to flash this code to my Particle Photon module. On the left pane below the lightning bolt, there's a verify button that will check the code for any programming errors. If there are no errors, I can proceed with pressing the lightning bolt icon, which is the flash button. In the lower left hand corner, you can see the current flash status. You should also see the mode status LED on your particle photon board blink different states as the code flashing is taking place, which only takes a few seconds. Next, I wanted to verify everything was flashed correctly and my Blink app was paired with my Photon module by pressing the Pump On button. As you can see, when the Pump On button is pressed, the D7 LED turns on which means I am successfully outputting a signal to that pin on the Photon module. The next step was to create a basic mount for my Photon module and other electrical components to be placed on. So I decided to 3D print the component, but no, you can use whatever is more convenient for you. So since this was somewhat of a prototype project, I decided to leave my particle photon attached to the breadboard. Also, since the transfer pump I have draws too much current to be hooked directly to my photon module, I had to buy a relay that could act as a middleman. Once the components were attached to the mount, I could start wiring up the relay, which is quite simple. I will leave a link in the description for an easy to follow wiring diagram if you want to use this setup for your application, but you can also pause the video if you want to follow along. Next, it was time to power up the Photon module to perform a basic test to verify everything was wired and operating correctly. As you can see, when I turn the pump on with the Blink out, it outputs power to my D7 pin, which is connected to my relay's input terminal, so therefore the relay activates. The relay also has a LED that turns on whenever the relay is activated, which is great for a secondary confirmation. Next, I wanted to install a manual on or off toggle switch in case I did not have my phone nearby when I was in the garden and just needed to manually control the pump. I also found a free 3D print design online for an enclosure and mount for standard toggle switches. However, my 3D printer appears to need some maintenance as the printed enclosure had a few print shift issues, but it was still usable. Next, it was time to wire up the switch to test out the functionality. Also, if you are new to electrical, I know there seems to be wire connections everywhere, but the wiring is actually really simple, so push through the fear and give it a try. So as you can see, when I flip the switch to the on position, the D7 pin receives power, which means my pump should turn on. Next, it was time to finally go outside and start prepping the new home for these electrical components. I first needed to disconnect the solar panel from my solar charge controller and then remove the electrical components and mount from the container.
getting my electrical components screwed down to the wooden base, I needed to install a 12 volt to 5 volt USB converter so that I could easily power my Photon module using the USB power cable. You can find a link to this converter in the description below. Note, typically I would not screw something into the end grain of wood, but since this is a prototype, it should be fun. Next, since my ProStar Solar Charge Controller has an accessories connection point that connects to the battery's power, I decided to wire the converter directly to the controller. Next it was time to test the power converter and connect the USB cable to my Photon module to make sure it would operate properly. Next I prepared and pre-wired the wires that would be connected on the output side of my relay and would be connected in series with my transfer pump circuit. Note, I wired my connections to the normally open contact on the relay so that if my Photon module ever had an issue where it lost power, my pump would turn off automatically. Next it was time to put all the components back into the container and reconnect the solar panel to the solar charge controller. Next I connected the relay connections to the transfer pump circuit. Again, you can find a link to the circuit diagram in the description below if needed. After everything was electrically connected, I needed to do some basic housekeeping and clean up some of the wire connections with some zip ties. Next, due to the distance from my home, I had to buy a Wi-Fi antenna so that my particle photon could connect to the internet. This is optional if you do not experience Wi-Fi connection issues. So let's quickly test the features I've added to this photon module. The most basic feature is the manual switch. When toggled on, the pump starts. And when toggled off, the pump stops. Now let's check the mobile out features. When I press the pump on button, the transfer pump starts, and vice versa, it stops when I press the button again. The last feature I added was the pump auto start time. This gives me the ability to pick any time of the day to start the pump, and also set how long I want the pump to run when it is automatically started. I believe in my next future version, I will add a way to add additional start times and completely disable the auto start feature from the app. Also, as a bypass, I added the option to allow me to use the manual switch to deactivate the auto start feature if I happen to be outside and I did not want to wait for the runtime duration to end to stop the pump. These are just some of the features I added, but hopefully as you can see, you can customize this as much as you like to fit whatever your needs may happen to be. If you like this video, I've attached another video you may also like to watch. Also, be sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you would like to see more videos like this. Until next time, thanks for watching.